Hello and welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley. Today we are going to kind of continue our class from yesterday at the same time uh, by looking more closely at adverbs and the placement of adverbs in the sentence structure. Okay, uh, a little bit confusing. Hopefully I can clarify it without confusing you even more about where, where to put adverbs. Depends on the adverb uh, often and sometimes depends on the meaning of the sentence. Hopefully we can help elucidate this uh, often confusing question of where to place the adverbs in a sentence. Uh, Okay, let me um, welcome students to the class. Hello, Heidi. Hello, nice to see you again. You uh, today the class is difficult, confusing. Sometimes. I am wondering if I follow the, the class because <laughs> my brain is half bored. <laughs> is it hot again? Ridiculously hot? Yeah, very hot. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I have a hard time concentrating and focusing when the temperature... It makes me wonder, Heidi, what's going to happen to the planet when global warming happens and it's 50 degrees every day everywhere in the world. Human beings are going to start going crazy. <laughs> uh, over 35 degrees Celsius, uh, Japan's um, weather forecast called it it's a summer day. <laughs> Last year, we didn't have any summer dates, but this year, uh, we have many, many summer dates. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck. Did you buy a fan? Uh, no. Uh, an electric fan? But, but I think it's Go not ahead. related to global warming. <laughs> because depending on the year, it's much different. Last year, it was very cold. Yeah. Right. Well, they, they don't use the term global warming anymore. It's climate <laughs> change. So, just... Extremes and climate. But I got another handy fan, so I have two now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have two hands. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let me also welcome other students to the class. Is is it German? German? Hello. 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 Did I remember your name correctly? Yes. Of course. Amazing. Pat myself on the back. Good job, Oakley. Okay. All right. Uh, good to see you again, German. Long time no see. Thank you. I didn't study because of my work. I work a lot, but now okay. I well, started in again. Okay. Well, welcome back, and congratulations on being busy. That's a good thing, I suppose. Okay. Great. Nice to see you again. Carolina is also with us again. Hooray. Hi, Carolina. Hi, teacher. Hi, hi. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, plenty of room in the class. If others out there in Burbling land would like to join us, come on in. Jump in anytime. Don't be shy about being a little bit late or whatever, no no matter. Uh, now, I'm presenting this uh, grammar material. It's a little bit challenging today. Um, I'm going to present material to you for about 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes or so, and then we're going to try a lot of exercises to develop our understanding. But first, I'm presenting material as I'm doing this. If you have a question, please feel free to interrupt me. I welcome your questions. It helps me to teach the material. So do not be shy. If there's anything you don't quite understand, please interrupt me. All right, because I'm doing a little bit of a lecture here. Uh, I'm more than happy to stop and attempt to clarify information if I understand it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do a screen share and let's begin. Okay, we're talking about adverbs today and where they go in a sentence. 
All right. Some adverbs, particularly these one word adverbs, always, also, probably, uh, often ones that have to do with um, duration or time. Uh, other ones like just or still, uh, as well as uh, ones that have to do with probability, like probably. Uh, okay. These often go with the verb in the middle of a sentence like this. Helen, subject noun, uh, always drives, always the adverb in front of the verb here. Helen always drives to work. Uh, okay. We were feeling very tired and we were also hungry. Uh, okay, we were hungry. Here's a passive clause here uh, with a verb to be were and the main verb hungry again in, appearing uh, with the verb here in the, in the middle. Well, uh, okay, here's a future tense example. The concert will probably be canceled. Obviously common to have probably with a future tense. Uh, okay, notice the placement here following this auxiliary verb. Okay, so this is normal. He, really, I should be talking about in front of the verb, but following the auxiliary. There are two helper verbs in this last example. Will be canceled. Without the, the concert will be canceled if we look at it without the adverb. All right. So there's two. Uh, this is a future passive. There's two auxiliary or helper verbs, will and be. Notice placement of probably is after the first auxiliary. All right. Uh, if the word is one word, like our first example, the adverb goes before the verb. Helen always drives to work. I almost fell as I was going down the stairs. So when there's no auxiliary, in other words, the adverb is in front of the verb. Okay, I cleaned the house and also cooked the dinner. Definitely not, definitely do not put it after. Not cooked also with these types of adverbs. Uh, okay, here's, an, here's another one that has to do with how often or how long. Uh, that's a similarity. Lucy hardly ever, ooh, it's a two-word ad, ad, adverb phrase, hardly ever watches television and rarely, okay, how often, reads newspapers. Uh, shall I give you my address? No, I already have it. Okay. Uh, notice that these adverbs, examples, always, often, also, go before the phrasal modal have to. Uh, Joe never phones me. Well, there's never in front of the verb. I always have to phone him. Not I have always to phone him. It's not going to work. All right, so that's also worth noting. Uh, I uh, Not just have to either. This, okay, what if it was another modal, like must? I um, I always must phone him. Um, okay, doesn't have to be just have to. I frequently must put on my shoes before I leave the house. Okay, same same idea. Not just have to, but other modals as well. Uh, quick shout out to Mark. Hey, Mark, welcome. 
to the class. Hi there. Hello, thank you very much. How are you today? I'm okay. Uh, okay. I'm okay, but uh, I have a hard time teaching this material because it's there's no absolute here for you to hold on to with your brain. Uh, we're, we're looking at these kinds of adverbs, very mm -hmm. simple adverbs. So, all right, just stay with me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay. Okay, let me continue. But adverbs go after the verb to be, yeah, like these examples here. We were feeling very tired, and we were also hungry. Well, okay. All right. In this, in this case, the verb to be is introducing just an adjective. All right. There's not another verb. This isn't a passive structure. So this is a little bit different than we were looking at before. It's not that this verb to be is an auxiliary. It's not. It's the main verb. Okay. So slightly different than what we just looked at. Uh, why are you always late? Okay, you are never on time. Uh, there it is. The you are is the main verb. The traffic isn't usually as bad as it was this morning. Okay, again, is is the main verb. Uh, with the negative, isn't still with the negative, the adverb coming after. Oh, okay. If the verb is two or more words, which means that it has some kind of auxiliary or helper word, whether that auxiliary is to create a verb tense or whether that is a modal, like can, um, can remember, doesn't eat, will be canceled. All right, the, us the adverb usually goes after the first verb. This is what I'd mentioned before, the first auxiliary or helper verb. Uh, okay, so looking at these examples, subject noun first, of course, verb one, modal or helper verb, can, then the adverb, can never, and then your main verb, remember her name. Okay, uh, all right, this first verb, whether it's an auxiliary or a helper verb, is very pivotal. 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 It's very important in English. For example, if I wanted to make this a question, can I remember, can I ever remember her name? <laughs> Maybe I'd have to change my adverb, but the point being, the first verb is the one you switch with the subject in a question. The first verb is the one you look at when you need to add uh, not, it comes after the first verb, when you need to add an adverb. The adverb comes after the first verb or auxiliary or helper verb. Okay, the second one is your main verb. It has most meaning. This one, the first one just helps it. Okay, another example, Claire doesn't, again, with the negative there, doesn't often eat meat. All right, uh, the negative present tense, we need we need to have the doesn't there, so we need that auxiliary, so here's the adverb placement. Here's a question, all right, again, being pivotal, this first auxiliary, we're looking at a present continuous tense, flip-flopped, transposed with the subject noun, so are you, again, the adverb following. So this is what it looks like in a question. Are you definitely going away next week? Uh, okay, and going is the main verb. Are going, present continuous tense. And here's a future tense. The can concert will probably be canceled. This is the one I was showing you exactly this earlier. All right. Uh, okay. Here's some more examples. You've always been very kind to me. With this is with the have been 
perfect tense. Needs to have the auxiliary have or has. Again, same thing. There's that adverb following the first auxiliary. He can't even boil an egg. Okay, using can, which is actually a modal helper verb, but again, there it is, following. Uh, here it is again in a question. All right, so same thing over and over and over. You will see that. Uh, special annoying detail. Okay, note that probably goes before a negative. So, okay, this is of special note. Please remember this is a little confusing. It's different, an exception. Here it is. I probably won't see you. Or you can say, I will probably not see you. You should not say, I won't probably see you. That sounds very strange. Very strange indeed. Uh, okay, so special exception here. Please note this. Mentally mark that one. Uh, okay. Well, since you've mentally marked probably, let's mentally mark all and both. Uh, okay, we all felt ill. <laughs> okay. All right, all or both, you're really counting, quantifying. Uh, yes, it would sound very strange to say we felt all ill. It would sound like all is now counting ill. Uh, like you're trying to say we felt completely ill instead of all of us felt ill. All right, so notice this construction. Uh, okay, my parents are both teachers, so okay. Notice where it is here. Our, my parents are both. Uh, you could can't I say, say both of my parents are teachers? Yeah, you certainly could, and I actually like that construction better. It's clearer for me, but you can't say my parents both are teachers. So you have a couple options. Yes, both. You don't even have to say both of my parents. You can just say both, both my parents. My parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. All right, Sarah and Jane, two people, have both applied. Now, finally, here we have it with an auxiliary. Okay. Here it is, much like the adverbs after the first uh, auxiliary. And notice all, are, um, all, same thing. Okay, so notice how the placement is slightly different with these specific quantifiers it kind of all right it's in front uh, of the verb when there's no auxiliary and then it's after uh, the auxiliary when you need to have an auxiliary so it's it, these two quantifiers in other words another way to look at it they act like adverbs Actually, that's exactly what they're doing. They're acting exactly like adverbs, the rules we've already looked at. Uh, okay. Next point to ponder. Sometimes we use these auxiliaries. Uh, instead of repeating part of a sentence, ah, okay, for, for example, Tom says he isn't clever but I think he is, instead of saying, I think he is clever. Yeah. Uh, if information is understood in English, it's often not repeated. So, but I think he is. This, this is very normal to, to hear this. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, we can also use always and never in, in this way. He always says he won't be late, 
but he always is. Again, dropping the word late. But he always is. Okay, I've, I've never done it, and I never will. Dropping, do it. All right, so a little side note that I don't know really what this has to do with. Ah, this has to do with using always and never, these adverbs. Okay, sometimes we can drop the... The, the noun, the object noun, I guess. Okay, there it is. Any questions before we try to do some exercises? If you're confused, hopefully uh, doing some exercises will help clarify. Okay, here we go. Um, First exercise, we're, please read the sentence first, and then uh, you need to decide if the sentence is okay or not okay. If it's not okay, then you need to correct it. What you're really looking at is the underlined word in the sentence. Uh, is it in the right place? So, for example, number one, Helen drives always to work. It, it's not right. It should be Helen always drives to work placement of the adverb in front of the verb when there are no auxiliaries to be seen that's where it goes the second sentence is perfectly okay I clean the house and also cook the dinner okay no problem all right uh, Heidi number three mm -hmm. I have usually a shower in the morning okay Mm -hmm. Is it okay or not okay? Uh, I usually have a shower in the morning. Would be better. Right. Putting the adverb in front of uh, the verb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how often? You know, the adverbs that I answer the question how often or when. This is definitely what you're going to do. Now, uh, okay, for argument's sake. Could you put the adverb anywhere else, Heidi? Another adverb? No, the same adverb usually. Can you move it anywhere else? Yeah, usually I have a shower in the morning. Yes, you can. A shower in the morning usually. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, usually, <laughs> usually you can do that. Now, now here is the. Uh, here is the the crux of the matter, that the rules we were looking at, okay, if you say, as Heidi did with her first example, I usually have a shower in the morning. If you put the adverb in front of the verb, when you don't have any other auxiliary, and that's where you place it, you will always be right. I guarantee it. Can I say, I have usually had a shower in the morning. I have usually had a shower in the morning. Um, yeah, if you include other materials, so you justify using a past perfect, because oh, that's not a past perfect. Past, uh, uh, present perfect. Yeah, thank you. Present perfect, rather. Excuse me. Right. Um, I have usually had a shower in the morning since 1992. <laughs> whatever. If you give me a reason to use present perfect, then that is correct. You put that adverb behind the first auxiliary. So, yes, that's absolutely correct. Um, right. To, to finish my thought, if you place this adverb either in front of a verb that has no auxiliary or behind the first auxiliary if you need one, you will always be right every time. If you move this adverb to the front of the sentence or sometimes to the very the very end of the sentence or the very front of the sentence, most times you are still going to be right, but occasionally there are cases where it will change the meaning of the sentence or it will just be completely wrong. So here's one of these stupid things in English where if you do it one way, you'll never be wrong. You have an option to do it other ways, but honestly, what's the point? Because 
um, because then you're taking a chance that you could be wrong or sound very strange. I guess the point is, to answer my own rhetorical question, the point is sometimes you do that just because of the way it sounds, because of the rhythm. It sounds better to your ear, so you you put the adverb in another place. Just to help yourself out as the speaker to sound what feels natural to you, I suppose, would be the reason that we do this in English. I guess. That's just my opinion, by the way. I might not be right. Uh, okay, let, anyway, let's continue the exercise. Germain, uh, number four, please. Okay, we, uh, we soon found the solution to the problem. All right, is that okay? Uh, I think that it is okay. I think you're right. Sounds great to me. Yeah, now see, here, if I move this to the end of the sentence, it would sound very weird. We found the solution to the problem soon. It's not right at all. It sounds very strange. So you can't always move them around. This sounds perfect the way it is. Uh, Carolina, number five. Steve gets hardly ever angry. I think it is Steve hardly ever gets angry. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, okay, yes, because, all right, gets is the ver verb. There's no auxiliary. No, it's perfectly normal. I'm sorry. I was looking at angry as a verb, but it's just an adjective here. So, actually, this is very normal. Right, you have one verb, gets. So, there you go. You're absolutely right. Uh, okay, good job. Mark, number six. Okay. I did some shopping. Some shopping, and I went also to the bank. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. I did some shopping, and I also went to the bank. There you go. And that is the safe way. Here is an adverb that you could have moved around. I did some shopping, and also I went to the bank. I did some shopping, and I went to the bank also. This one could be moved. All right. Earlier, soon, could not be moved. All right. So this, again, it's that weird thing in English where if you do it one way, it's always right. Otherwise, you may or may not be right. It's strange. Okay, Heidi, number seven. Jane had already to hurry in that morning. Uh, Jane already had to hurry in the morning. Yeah. Okay, very good. That sounds perfectly fine. Um, Jane has to hurry in the morning always. Sounds weird to me. Here's another one that sounds strange if you move it around. Okay, Jermaine, uh, number eight. Okay. I never have worked in a factory. Uh, it is past perfect, yes? I, I, uh, it is present perfect. Present perfect. Have worked. Okay, have worked. Uh-huh. I have never worked in a factory. There you go. Very good. So you're going to put this uh, negative, put this adverb behind the first auxiliary. Good job. Very good. You spotted it. This one was different than all the rest before. Good job. Okay. Carolina, number nine. I never have enough time. I always am busy. I think the first one is okay. I never have enough time. And the second one is I am always busy. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Very good. Now, uh, notice how nine is different than eight. Although they appear to be similar sentences, have is the main verb here. So Carolina is absolutely correct. The adverb goes in front of the main verb. Great. Good job. 
And the weird thing with the verb to be, when it is the main verb, then the adverb follows it. Very good. You remembered. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Let's try another set of exercises. Uh, in this case, we are going to uh, rewrite the sentence. To We're going to insert the word in the adverb in brackets at the end of the sentence. So, for example, number one, Claire doesn't eat meat. Claire doesn't often eat meat. Uh, okay, putting in the adverb after the first auxiliary here. There it is. Okay, Mark, you're going to start us off here in this set of exercises with number two. Number two, Catherine is always very generous. Very good. Placement after the verb to be, which is the main verb here. That's it. Excellent. Uh, okay, Heidi, number three. Mm, I don't have to work on Saturdays. I usually don't have to work on Saturdays. Uh, okay. Well, I usually don't have to work on Saturdays, or I don't usually have to work on Saturdays. I don't, um, I don't usually. I usually don't have. <laughs> okay. Well, to me, be true to our rules, <laughs> we should say I don't usually have to work on Saturdays. Uh, after the first auxiliary, before the main verb, Ah, oh, because we have have to. Ah, I usually have to. No, that's right. Right? Before have to. Let's, let's review. Let me make sure. Even I get nervous doing this because I don't remember. Uh, where was, where did we look at have to and other, where was that? <laughs> have to. Uh, okay, note that these adverbs go before have to. I always have to phone him. Okay. Uh, all right. So there you are. It goes before the, the modal, uh, phrasal modal have to. I don't usually have to work on Saturdays. However, Heidi's not completely wrong usually can usually be you as we mentioned earlier it can be moved pushed all over the, this sentence it would not make any difference to me as the listener if you said usually I don't have to work on Saturdays I usually don't have to work on Saturdays I don't usually have to work on Saturdays I don't have to work on Saturdays usually notice slight change in my intonation uh, but it depends on the context. Yeah, and right, and I all I'm really going to do it slightly depends on the context and what you're trying to emphasize, and even subconsciously, without thinking about it, I change my intonation to reflect that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But this is usually other adverbs are not so versatile. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, all right, German, number four. Okay, number four. Mm, do you always watch TV in the evening? Very good. Always before the web, but the watch. watch. That's right. Very good. We do have the auxiliary here because it's a question, and then we have the, you know, subject noun. You're absolutely right. It's going to follow those. That's correct. Do you always watch TV in the evenings? Yeah, now, you know, it, it absolutely. Now, here's a place where you can never do that. Okay, a uh, quick note here. With a question, um, there's no way you can put the adverb first. All right? You, you can't do that because that's not the question structure. Um, uh, 
Always, what kind of ice cream do you like? That makes no sense at all. Um, all right. You can't mess with the beginning of a question sentence structure by sticking in whatever, adverbs or adjectives or anything else. It's not possible. Uh, question forms are a lot less versatile than statement forms. You can't do as much. They're, you're very limited as to how you can change the structure of a question. So, yeah, good job, Jermaine. That's the only place that can go. Carolina, number five. Mm, Martin is learning Spanish and he's learning Japanese. Martin is learning Spanish and he is also learning Japanese. Yes. Perfect. Or I, or I can I can say Martin is learning Spanish and also Japanese. Yes, very good. So yes, there's no need to repeat. Uh, there's no need to repeat this verb structure in here. Very good. Perfect. That was perfect. Okay, that's exactly how it should be done. Okay, now a triple mark. Triple whammy. <laughs> okay, what are the three ways to do this? Wow. Wow, challenging. All right. <laughs> we were all on holiday in Spain. We were all on holiday in Spain. We were okay. staying at the same hotel. Same hotel. We, were, we all were... We enjoy, we enjoy as we all, oh, we, enjoyed ourselves. we all enjoyed ourselves. Okay. That's so, really tricky. Okay. Okay. First one. Let's 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 go one by one here. Okay. First one. Yeah, I think you had it right. Okay. We were all on holiday in Spain. Very good. Okay, now it's why because were is the only verb. It's the main verb. So, just like the adverbs, all and both are going to follow. They follow the same rules as the adverb, both and all. So, it, it when there's only the main verb to be, it follows. So, very good. Okay, and B. We all are staying at the same hotel. Mm, no, we've got. Uh, we all, we all, well, okay. we were all, we're all staying. Yes, we're we all staying at the same hotel, of course. We're all we're, staying at the same hotel. Right. It's gonna. The adverb's no. gonna follow the first auxiliary. This is a past yeah. continuous. No, yeah. And it, it makes sense this way. <laughs> we're sure. All staying at the same hotel. <laughs> well, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> We were all staying at the same hotel. Okay. And then the last one. We have one main verb. So where does all go? We all enjoyed ourselves. There you go. Right in front is where the adverb goes. That's perfect. Oh, kidoki. Uh, okay. Heidi. Mm -hmm. uh, the new hotel. Is probably expensive. Oh. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, it probably costs a lot to stay here. There. Okay. Now wait a minute. What was the first one? I couldn't keep up. The new hotel is probably very expensive. Okay. So all right. Following the verb to be, which is the only. Uh, is the only verb. Okay. It, and then the second one. Uh, it, it probably cost a lot to stay there. Okay. Okay. I think that's right. <laughs> All right. It is probably right. That's definitely right. Uh, it probably costs a lot. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Probably is a little tricky. All right. German, last one. 
Okay, okay, last one. I. Whiskey. <laughs> yeah. I'm confusing a little bit. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I probably, I... I probably can. Maybe... You know what, Jermaine? I'm also. I need to look again. Let's look again. Uh -huh. Let's reveal. Let's help each other here. I need to make sure I don't make a mistake. Okay, here we go. Note that probably goes before a negative. Uh, okay, before the negative. That's what I thought. Um, not after. Whereas normally it would follow the normal rules, but here's that exception. It, when probably is with a negative, um, it goes before, not after the first auxiliary. So probably is a weird exception. Okay, so let's look at it again. Uh, the first, I can probably help you. Correct. Good. Okay. And the second, I probably can't help you. There you go. That's it. Okay. So with Probably you have to be aware of that weird exception with negatives. Uh, okay. I probably don't want to go. I probably don't have any money. I don't probably have any money. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I probably don't have any money. Okay. It sounds right. <laughs> okay. Good job, Germain. And... I had to double check myself. I didn't want to make a mistake. Okay, let's try another one. Let's see if we can do some more here. Ooh, this looks challenging. We're going to complete the sentences. Uh, the sentence is kind of more or less mixed up. <laughs> looks like the end of the sentence is there for you. Uh, Right, okay. Yes, I probably have no money. You wouldn't say I have probably no money. That makes no sense at all. I have I have no probably money. That makes no sense at all. Right, that sounds very strange. Uh, okay, anyway, um, next exercise. The words in parentheses or brackets, whichever you prefer to call them, uh, are or may be scrambled up. So your job is to put them in the correct order. It looks like the end of the sentence is going to remain the same. So example number one, I can never remember her name. Okay. Thanks, Jermaine. See you later. Take care. Okay, so let's try it out here. Uh, Carolina, you can kick us off with this exercise. I usually take sugar in my coffee. Oh. Okay, I'm muting myself. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, number three, I'm usually hungry when I get home from work. Okay, very good. I am usually hungry when I finish class at this hour. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, uh, are you? Okay. Both. Uh, we are both hungry. Ah, oh, there's both. Uh, here's another both for you, Heidi. Uh, number four. Mark and Amy both were born in Massachusetts. No, no, Manchester. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, it's going to follow the same rules as the adverbs. Um, Mark and Amy, and we... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It has born. This particular verb uh, is doesn't have to be, but it almost always is spoken as a passive. So this is actually a passive verb with the verb to be. Um, looks like a simple past passive. So Mark and Amy... Uh, Again, it works just like an adverb, so we can place it after the first auxiliary, Heidi. So I think 
Mark and Amy were both born in Manchester. Were both born. Okay. Uh, again, it is possible in this case, and it's very common, actually, as Mark suggested way earlier in the class, to put both at the beginning of the sentence. So it's very normal to say both Mark and Amy. Um, blah, 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 blah. If you we would all, we all both, we all were born, you know, we all. Well, like we, mm. instead of Mark and Amy, mm -hmm. we all were born. Um, we all were born in Manchester. We were all born in Manchester. We were all after a while. Mm -hmm. Same thing. We were all born in Manchester, okay. every one of us. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I will admit to you, Heidi, that I'm sure you have heard native speakers say it the way you said it. I think it's one of those things where, technically speaking, it's grammatically a mistake. However, I have def as you, you've been studying English long enough now, you probably know native speakers make a lot of gr grammar mistakes, and they don't even know they're making these grammar mistakes. So I am sure that you have probably heard uh, the placement the way that you were experimenting with. Mark and Amy both were born in Manchester. Mark, uh, okay, we all were born in Manchester. I'm sure you've heard that. I'm sure I've heard it. So, but if we want to be grammatically sound, we, we should use the same role as adverbs. Put it after the first auxiliary. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, Carolina, number five. Lisa is a good pianist. She and um, she can also sing very well. Very good. Excellent. She can also sing very well. Uh, all right. Okay. Same thing. Using the looking at the modal as an auxiliary, putting the adverb after the modal. Okay, excellent. Mark number six. And number six. Our cat usually sleeps under the, the under the bed. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. Yeah, one verb. One adverb. Yep, adverb before the verb. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay. Uh, Heidi, number seven. They live in the same building as me, but I've I've never spoken to them. Yep. Again with it. Another perfect tense. I have never spoken. Definitely. That even sounds the most. Normal. It sounds weird if you move it around, but never have I spoken to them. Well, actually, possibly to add emphasis or drama, but never have I spoken to them. But never once did I do that. Uh, I could have cheated on a test all through school, but never once did I actually cheat on an exam. Okay, sometimes for drama, especially with butts, uh, you may hear this construction, especially but never once did I, which sounds very strange, but okay, just, but never, it's very dramatic, but never once did I blah, 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 uh, okay, just so you're aware of that kind of strange structure. It does exist. Carolina, how about number eight? Day job is always very busy. You always have to wait a long time to be served. served. Okay. You always have to. All right. Placement of the adverb always in front of have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that's what you're doing. Okay, 
Well, good job. Okay. Mark, number nine. Number nine. My eyesight, my eyesight isn't very good. I can only read with glasses. Perfect. Okay, can read. It's the verb construction only after the can. Oh, okay. We're rocking now. Heidi, number 10. Whoa. Uh, we were all tired, so we uh, all fell asleep. Okay, we were all tired. All right. In this case, were is the only main verb. This is easy to get confused because you have uh, you have an adjective tired, which when you have an adjective which could be a verb as well, it can be very confusing when you look at it. But Heidi is exactly right. Actually, there's only one verb, uh, were. So all or both is going to follow that just like in the adverbs okay so we all fell asleep yeah that's right excellent okay Carolina number 11 are you tired yes I am always at this time of day uh, okay that one seems weird uh, I am always at this time. It sounds, sounds weird. Of the day, yes. Yeah, no, no, it sounds, no, that not that part. The part you are following the rules. Yeah. Um, so you are correct. So technically, I know you must be correct, but actually, to me, this sounds strange. Uh, it sounds more normal to to me to say I always am. Uh, tired at this time of day. I always am. Hmm. No, I, I always am. am. Always. I am always tired at this time of day, or I always am. Uh, it would sound normal to me. Are you tired? Yes, I always am at this time of day. Sounds normal. Now you're following the rules. I am. I am always. Huh. That's weird. I am always at this time of day. Hmm. That one sounds strange to me when it's done grammatically correctly. It really does. I always am. Uh, okay, are you working hard? Yeah, I always am. I always do. Ah, I guess because I'm omitting working hard. I always am working hard. I always do. That's normal because do is the main verb. Uh, maybe it's because I always am getting tired. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because there's like a – maybe it sounds strange because it seems as if there should be – more to the verb tiring or something that, that one's odd just sounds odd to me but I can't really explain it so grammatically speaking Carolina you're, you're absolutely correct uh, all right oh well uh, mark number 12 Ooh, probably oh. Oh. I will probably We'll be leaving early tomorrow. Um, okay. This has got two auxiliaries. Will, be, and then the main verb, leaving. I will probably be leaving early tomorrow. After the first auxiliary. R remember, probably works normally. I probably, and we'll, I probably will be leaving early tomorrow. Now, I think it's possible. But to, to keep the grammar rules consistent, it would go after the first auxiliary. So I will probably be leaving early tomorrow. Okay. 
okay it really probably follows the same rules that we looked at for everything unless it's negative as in the next sentence Heidi number 13 I'm afraid I probably won't be able to come to the party right with a negative probably is going to go before the auxiliary so exactly perfect I probably won't do something right very good okay uh, Carolina try number 14 Helen is away a lot she is hardly ever at home okay there's only one verb is so the adverb is going to follow it very good mark number 15 wow these go on forever Um, in the same place we have the ring over again. Okay. Um, we still. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. Mark, yeah. Did I lose you? Okay, A anyway, all right. Oops, he is not still here. <laughs> All right. We are still living. Uh, okay, are living. This is a present continuous tense. So it's going to follow the first auxiliary with still. First time we've seen still. All right. Um, our time is up. Can, let's see if we can quickly do the last couple. Why not? Heidi, number 16. If we hadn't taken the same train. Uh, we would do, uh, have never met each other. We would would have, have never met each yeah. other. Okay, we would we would have never met each other. We would never have met each other. Uh, we would have never met each other. No. Uh, I think. We have to worry about this first auxiliary or helper. Here's a, a modal. If we hadn't taken the train, we would never have met each other, I think, is the um, correct way to do it. Although, again, the way you said it is doesn't sound wrong to me at all. It sounds very normal. Uh, sometimes it's just simply a matter of co-location and how native speakers say it, but if we want to be grammatically correct, it would have to be, we would never have met each other. Uh, okay. All right. Carolina, last one. Close the Tanya class. always says that she phoned me, but she does, never does. But she never does. Okay. That was actually simple, just putting the adverb in front of the verb. Okay, thank you, ladies and others who were in the class and are now gone, <laughs> and viewers, and everyone else. Thank my parents, thank uh, the Academy, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. bye.